and a new species of plant-eating dinosaur has been discovered on the Isle of Wight. Don't worry, <laughs> it's not alive. Uh, it died out 125 million years ago, but this is big news. It is big news. Paleontologists believe the specimen, which consists of 149 bones and weighed as much as an elephant, is the most complete dinosaur found in the UK in more than a century. It's really exciting. Professor Phil Manning is Chair of Natural History at the University of Manchester and joins us now with a friend. <laughs> we'll talk yes. about this in a moment. Sure. But let's talk about this find first. Uh, amazing, right? I know the Isle of Wight is one of those incredible hotspots for finding dinosaurs, especially from the Lower Cretaceous. And this from the new what? Lower Cretaceous. OK. Yes, you, it's, it's a period of time where dinosaurs were abundant in what is now the Isle of Wight. And it's, it's, it's just so bizarre. In the last five or six years, so many new dinosaurs being found from this island. And, and this, this new genus and species adds to the mix. So, so basically, all of the kids out there have to learn another another dinosaur name. Shall we let you pronounce it? <laughs> um, well, it, it it's, it's... No, I think you should have a go. I, 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 I want to... No, so you, it's go on, please. We, well, we've been trying phonetically been with the team to spell it out to help us this morning, and we've gone through about three different versions already. Cool. I think what the latest we think it is is Comptonatus chasei. That's pretty good. I, I've always argued there's no right way of pronouncing a dinosaur. And um, all these new names, they mean something. And this one's named after Nick Chase, who is the chap who discovered it. Oh, that's the Chase bit, Chase. Exactly. Okay. So, so that's, that's how you get a lot of these dinosaur names. Now, Jeremy Lockwood, who is the scientist who's, who's been describing the species for the last 10 years, has done a remarkable job. And it is a very complete dinosaur. I mean, it's, it's roughly about 50% complete. And that's a lot. I hope I am 50% complete <laughs> in 125 million years, if you look at it that way. How was, uh, how was he, he, she, found? Ooh, there's a bag of worms. No, he, she. It's, it's hard to work out um, whether you're dealing with a male or female dinosaur. Obviously, if it sat on a, on a, on a, on a bunch of eggs, it could be uh, a brooding female. Yeah. But chances are it could have been a, a male doing it as well. So it's really hard to diagnose whether you're dealing with male and female dinosaurs. But, but for, for me, the most exciting thing about this is you've got another piece in this phenomenal jigsaw of the evolution of life on Earth, which has just been dropped into place. And so we've got that little bit more information to understand about this animal from the Isle of Wight. And the bit of jigsaw you've brought in with you, the heavy bit of jigsaw, um, this is a relative of the, of the one that's been found, right? This is from the Isle of Wight. It's, okay. an, it's an iguanodon. Mm -hmm. um, femur, so it's an, a thigh bone, and you just, you just. This is why I've got so much respect for the collectors on the Isle of Wight, the folks who go out in all weather, pulling these dinosaur bones off the beach from the cliffs. It's really hard work. This weighs about 50, 60 pounds. Can we hold it? Um, if you, if you wish. <laughs> there you go. They put it on the glass table. Oh gosh, oh. right, yeah. So it's, God, that's super heavy. And that's a small one. I'm going to let you hold it. No, it's fine. <laughs> so the, the work that goes you. into excavating them, preparing them, and then the amazing work that the museums do with these fossils. Now, if you, if you go to the Isle of Wight, you can see many dinosaurs at the Dinosaur Isle Museum. It's one of the national gems in terms of the UK museums because it has many of these beautiful objects. And you talked about the jigsaw. What does Comptonatus chasei uh, tell us? What, what's the new uh, bit of information that we've learned from there? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating time because you have this extinction event which happens at the end of the Jurassic. Everyone's heard of the Jurassic. As you move into the Cretaceous, fewer people have heard of the Cretaceous. But, but it's this period where species are evolving rapidly and it looks like Iguanodon is one of these creatures that seem to have a, a, a lot of different species present at this point in time. So there's a lot of evolutionary experimentation going on with animals adapting to different habitats. So it's a fascinating time to study dinosaurs. And, and, and then this new creature just adds more diversity, more biodiversity, something we're used to talking about, but less so when we talk of dinosaurs. And though. we've got this artist impression, have we? So from, from the bones, you can work out what, what his face, his head might have looked like. Well, that's, that's always a fun thing. You're trying to work out what dinosaurs once looked like. Sometimes you get skin impressions that can help you. They are frustratingly rare, uh, especially on the Isle of Wight. In fact, I don't know of... Maybe they get a little bit of sauropod skin or those long neck, long tail dinosaur skin impressions. But of, of our friend, the iguanodontids, there's, there's not much in the way of skin impressions. So the artistic reconstructions we see, there's a lot of artistic licence. But it is based on the bones. 
And so why... these reconstructions are wonderful, yes. I'm intrigued to ask, why is the Isle of Wight such a, a, a centre of dinosaur bones? It's like one of those Rudyard Kipling just so stories. The just the right age rocks and just the right environment have been brought up to the surface. There's there's a there's a, a structure which has geologically uplifted the, the rocks of the right age to the surface in the Isle of Wight. And these have been eroded through time and the bones start literally falling out of the cliffs. So we're looking there at some pictures from the Isle of Wight. There, there, there could be much more out there, is there? Oh, yes, there's going to be loads. Of, I hope so, because although I'm out of a job. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's so many different uh, new species which are lurking in the rocks of not just the Isle of Wight, but globally. And the more we understand the past, I think there's a much better chance we can understand our present and maybe plan a bit for the future. And is, is the Isle of Wight globally significant? Then, oh, yes, yeah. completely. I mean, the dinosaurs of the Isle of Wight are one of these linchpin moments in the evolution of dinosaurs where you can say, well, what's happening? Uh, uh, 125 million years ago on the planet, the Isle of Wight can hold its head up high saying, oh, we can tell you, because there's phenomenal fossils there to help tell that story. Fantastic. You've been very cool with the uh, company behind you. You've been chased and well, roared at. We're, we're, we're almost closer to that dinosaur T-Rex than our, our extinct friend here. But because um, T-Rex became extinct roughly 66 million years ago. Remember, these animals were alive 125 million years ago. The ones I dig in the US and the Jurassic are... are we, actually, we're closer to T-Rex in time than the dinosaurs I'm digging in the US are at the moment. Speak for yourself. Know, Speak for this yourself. is about as close to a T-Rex as I'd ever like to get, I think. It's quite, quite scary behind my, <laughs> oh, yeah. my right shoulder. <laughs> Professor Phil Manning, great to have you. Really Pleasure. interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Really interesting.